Hello, welcome back to Oracle DBA tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to we're going to take a look at how we are going to install Oracle Database Server on a machine. So, it's a brief introduction of different types of Oracle installation. So, let's say this is our installation type. So, we can we can have Oracle in single instance. Single instance. So in single instance, we have one instance accessing one database file system. In other case, what we can have, we can have a clustering environment. Clustered instance. So what is in, in a cluster instance, uh, what we have is that we have multiple instances, say I1 and I2. They are accessing the access same database file. Whereas in case of single instance, we have one instance i1 is accessing one database file. Okay, so based on these two different types, how uh, you know how database database is accessed by instance, we have two separate types of installation. One is single instance, another is clustered instance. So again, as you discussed uh, before, that this database file system can be of cooked file system. That means you know. That means uh, we can install on the um, on the on the operating system files, or it can be of raw devices. So in case of raw devices, uh, we work around. We, we we get rid of operating system. Oracle kernel can directly talk to the raw devices. And number three is. ASM or automated storage management. So ASM is a 10G uh, feature which started from 10G. So it essentially allows uh, you know the instance uh, to manage uh, disk by itself. So ASM instance is going to manage the disk. So there are three different types. Again, like you know what, I'm, what we are talking about that you can install single inst single instance in three different ways, and then. In every all of this, you can do one more round that you can either install using OUI or it's called Oracle Inversal in, uh, Installer. So the Oracle Inversal Installer is a graphical user interface or GUI mode by which you can uh, install. Very much like uh, you install Microsoft Word or anything else. So this uh, wizard is comes up and then guide you through the to the steps of to the, through the installation steps so the equivalent of that thing in oracle is oui or oracle universal installer using oui you can install on a guided manner um, the complete installation or else what you can do you can use something called silent install so silent install is a command line tool what you did what you need to give you need to give to the silent installer a bunch of parameters like you know what is your database name what is your data files and so on and then silent installer is going to install uh, the database without asking any further question so the difference between OUI and silent installer is that this is interactive and this is command line Okay. Similarly, like you know, in the raw devices, you can also have OUI or silent install and all this thing. And again, in the OUI, you can do it in, in two different ways. That you can either go install plus create database. So th there are two steps involved. You first install the Oracle software. That means it will take the C files, it will compile, and then make all this .dot a file and all this thing and make the dynamic you know the dlls which is called libraries or in uh, in unix it is called dot so that means shared objects and then it is going to create the database two steps so what you can do is you can either do step one in interactive mode that means you just do a software install and then you invoke another tool called dbca or database create creation assistance okay so using dbca tool what you can do you can 
create the DB that means second step you know what I'm what I'm talking here is that you can do both together on a UI interactive mode or you do the software install and then invoke DBCA to continue on doing and then remember db basically you know the reason behind this dbca and all those things it gives us added benefits like you can create a template and you can create you know you can delete a database and so on so we'll see that in detail uh, in our uh, actual hands on installation and similarly let's go about cluster cluster in instance so cluster instance also required to for you to install oracle grid environment okay oracle grid environment so that means some additional software which which needs to be installed for cluster or ASM kind of uh, storage you need to have uh, Oracle grid environment installed and besides that you also you need to have cluster where okay so cluster where software needs to be installed and after that you can install the rack or this is called a cluster instance or for popularly known as rack or real application cluster cluster so these are all different combinations and believe me these are not the only combinations you can have also very detailed if I go to raw devices what kind of raw devices I'm going to do and then it's going to be another instruction type so what I'm going to do in this set of videos right now I want to cover the basic things that means I'm going to cover this part completely and also I'm going to cover ASM and I'm not going to cover anything on rack right now because you know in order to do install this rack the installation is a little bit complicated and also it requires specialized hardware so I'm not going to cover it right now but maybe in future I plan to you know have those you know big hardware where I can s demonstrate you a real application cluster installation but for time being what we're going to do we're going to concentrate mostly on the basic things and and and, and I'll just give that idea how to do and then maybe I can teach you how to how to start with and then you can we can cover the remaining okay so after we understand what are the different scenario of installation let's try to from where do I start okay so the best answer to is go to Google and then choose Oracle eleven G documentation. So the first hit is Oracle ten G, so you click on that. Right. So right now you are looking at the Oracle 10G documentation and the first documentation is about installation and upgrading. So click on that. So you will see all the essential information regarding the installation. And as you know Oracle is supported on different operating systems. So therefore the in the document the, in the documentation they have given how to install on different uh, different uh, operating systems so the first one is about Linux installation guide similarly they have given Microsoft Windows Solaris HP Unix AIX and then other supplementary uh, you know installation guides that, that, that you need so what I want to essentially show you I'm going to test I'm going to show you the demonstration using Linux operating system and the reason behind that there is a lot of benefits that to that and also it's cheap to show us. instead of going for a HP Unix or Microsoft Windows Linux is which is almost free I can I can I can show on that uh, with less cost incurred to me alright so if you go to Linux uh, installation guide you will see different you know guides so which one I need to see you need to see two things the database quick installation guide and database installation guide for Linux and this is for x86 that, that means it is for 32 bit operating system and the next one is for 64 bit Linux operating system alright so let's go and take a look at the quick installation guide okay. so this installation guide will tell you what you need to do to install 
Oracle software on Linux platform. So these are the, the, the key bullet points whatever is saying you need to go one by one to this thing. So let's say like you know in, let's say for example if you want to install you need to first get the hardware like you know what kind of hardware you need and if you click on that it will tell you it's saying that okay you need a one gigabyte of physical RAM machine and also it takes that how much swap space you need if you have the memory between 1 GB to 2 GB then you know all this all this separate things it will it will it will tell you and also if I go to, go to top it will send me like you know what kind of software requirements that means you know on that Linux operating system what are different types of software you know packages required Linux packages and then how do you what are what kind of kernel parameters you need to have okay so essentially what we are going to do we are going to cover this thing in the next video about how we get a machine hardware how we get the software and then how do you configure and make the machine prepared for a database server installation